Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. BGG here from DinarUpdates.com bringing you uh, the uh, conference call we have been trying to get to for the last couple of days. Uh, this is Sunday, June 17th. Uh, we've got some very, very important stuff that we're going to talk about. We're going to try and keep this. This will be a fairly short call. Before we get going, this is BGG. Would you say a quick prayer to get us started off right? Thank you so much. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you by the blood of Jesus. Thank you for your grace, your mercy, your forgiveness. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for um, your love, your joy, your peace. And we just thank you for um, this whole group of people. We pray for the people in Iraq. We thank you for the victories and liberation there. And we just pray that you will continue to do your will there, God. And thank you for everybody who serves and helps on this site, God. I pray that you'll bless each person and their family, and we thank you for all the fathers, grandfathers, and we pray that they have a wonderful day tomorrow. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. And before we get going, yes, happy Father's Day to everybody tomorrow, all you fathers out there. Uh, It takes leadership. We couldn't do it without you. Uh, Also, I want to make sure that I say thank you to all the moderators, uh, all the people that have helped uh, make Dinar Updates the website that it is down through the years. We made a bunch of changes recently, but uh, we still appreciate all of our mods and our people that help out. We can never do this thing without you guys. Uh, We did uh, just recently, a week or two ago, a little while back, we just shut down the chat room. Uh, Here's why I did this, okay? It's not that anything's gone wrong. I'm not expecting anything. I'm not seeing any, you know, obviously it it may well change in the very near future our our financial situation. But uh, the the deal with the chat room is for what good it was doing, uh, it was was wildly expensive in the terms of of human effort and outlay. just the toll that it was taking on our people was just fat. It was just way too much. I just couldn't handle it anymore. And uh, and for what you know, for what we were getting out of that, it just the, the trade off was not. Uh, it was not fair. It was not a good trade off. It was not a good expenditure of human resources. And no matter what we uh, what that cost us, I just didn't feel right about it. So uh, I pulled the plug on that at least for the time being. Uh, and I don't particularly see my decision changing at any time in the near future. For all the reasons I just said, I mean, this is very, very expensive in the in the uh, human outlay. The, the the toll that it was taking on our people just is very, very high, and uh, I just, you know, I had had a problem with that. Always have, uh, and you know, we we have all the resources. I mean, we've got the forum, we've got the the blog, we've got the observer, we've got the uh, there's news going all day long. Every single it was just like three or four. How many pages of news today, Matt Scout? Like three or four pages of current Iraq news. Tons and tons of news going on every day. And then we've got uh, we've got the Facebook group that goes all day long, every single day. It goes that goes 24 hours. I mean, there is that is a very very active group, way over 5,000 people. If you're not on on the Dinar Updates uh, private Facebook group, you might want to get on that. It's actually a secret group now. We just don't want people knowing who you are and what you have. Um, and uh, and then we obviously are on Twitter also. I mean we we do, I mean we do 20 25 tweets a day. Biggest articles that come out, we tweet them. Then there's the deuce list. When it becomes necessary, we're gonna we're gonna be uh, email. And it's not like we're lacking any kind of uh, any kind of resource for information. So just because we don't have a, an online chat room all day every day like we used to have, doesn't mean we don't have resources. It's in fact it's actually I I kind of think it's a little bit better now. You know a little less uh, time intense, and we are able to devote more uh, resource to the news. Let's get to that news, by the way. BGG, uh, we had four, four pages four pages today. Mm-hmm. Huge news day. Huge news day in the forum. Current around, uh, go to denarupdates.com, uh, click forum, go down about halfway down. You'll see the link that says current Iraq news, and that is just chock full of news every single day. We've got the Facebook group that brings news in all the time. There's links all over the place. You can't miss this thing. So uh, anyway, that's what's kind of been going on. I kind of gave everybody a little bit of heads up when we first started. A couple guys that were 
you know, upset about, you know, how valuable their time is. And uh, this is free, folks. I mean, uh, every single person here volunteers their time. So, you know, let's lose, uh, let's, let's, let's just be very thankful for what we all get as far as information goes. I know I am. I mean, it's, it's, it's just breathtaking to see how this thing has unfolded and, and all the uh, fine work everybody does. One Bobby's on back here with us. Bobby, thank you so much for being here. Uh, anybody that, and, yeah, uh, good to have you on, brother. It's been a long time. Uh, I just got out several, of rehab and we're doing good. Did you? Fantastic. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Well, I mean, I'm just, I'm going to leave that alone because there's just so many ways I could go with that. <laughs> yeah, me too. I don't want to be a stumbling block to anybody. And, you know, if you are out of rehab, great. If you're not, it was funny. I'm laughing with you. Uh, several big news topics uh, out right now. And like I said, we're going to try and keep this around, thir- you know, 30, 35 minutes tonight. Uh, just kind of touching base, letting you know where things are. Uh, over the last couple of days, there have been the news that, uh, that Russia reportedly, reportedly uh, killed al-Baghdadi. That is not impossible to believe, folks. I'm not saying it is or it isn't. I'm just saying reportedly that's what they're coming out with. Uh, you know, everybody's going to say, no, that didn't happen. I don't, you know, I'm not even going to go into that. Um, there is always, in this region, there is always a slant on the news, even the human interest stories. Everybody wants to zero in on the human interest stories. There's a thousand different versions of that. I would just be very careful. So, uh not impossible that Russia bombed uh, al-Baghdadi out of existence because that would probably be, if he, and I would suspect he did escape uh, Mosul. I can't imagine him staying there. Uh, so it makes sense that they blew him up in Raqqa. So that's just, I mean, just, just common sense. Not to say that they did or didn't, but I, it's entirely believable. Uh, one constant theme, a constant thread, a common thread over the last two or three days, and this is, this is what I would tend to believe, is that they, have been, they were talking about an announcement coming within hours about the liberation of Mosul. That's not true, and, and that was uh, probably what I would call political forward-looking statements. Anybody that's familiar with those? It's when a banker says, we think this is going to happen in the future, and it didn't quite happen on schedule. A lot of that going on over there, but uh, there is a very uh, constant, uh, consistent message, and that is the uh, uh, all of the Iraqi uh, forces are waiting for the announcement to finalize Mosul within hours. They're ready to get going, uh, and I would say we've only got about 10 days left in Ramadan. Uh, a body needs some kind of political celebration. I mean, I've said this kind of, he's kind of looking for, uh, he's looking for some kind of a, uh, a political hurrah, and that would help him quite a bit. So I would expect at least the, the, uh, uh, the announcement of, of something along these lines very, very soon. Uh, one thing that I do want to address, so I talked about al-Baghdadi, talked about hours toward, until an announcement, could be, you know, uh, it, could, it, it could be over so fast to make your head spin. We don't know. Uh, but they are, you know, it, it's a constant thread in the, uh, what I would call the more reliable news feeds. It's a constant theme that that's kind of what's happening. It, it's, they're not very far away from dealing with the final, final elements in Mosul. Um, I did want to talk about what I have been saying during my re- re- previous chats, previous conversations, previous Facebook Lives. I have been very consistent about this. Uh, I never said, as soon as we see Mosul liberated, we'll see an RV right afterward. There are people out there saying I said that. That's not true. What I have said very plainly, I think we're getting very, very close to some finalization I think there's a, they're, they're beating this financial drum quite a bit. Uh, Mr. White and I are going to talk about a couple concepts here in just a couple seconds. It's going to be real live eye openers. Uh, what I have said is I think that uh, the United Nations, IMF, and the World Bank want Mosul done. They want this thing to start settling down. 
that kind of seems to be the price tag for Iraq's integration and international acceptance. They're getting very, very close to that, and I have said very plainly, I want to see Mosul done, and I want to see what the news cycles look like for the next week or two right after Mosul. Exactly what I said. Once we see that, we're going to have a real idea as to where we're at. I think we're close to that. Hang in there. Here's a really important topic that we need to talk about. Mr. White and I were on the phone uh, the other day, and uh, Mr. White, you had a couple really key points. Let's bat that around here for a minute. Sure. Um, I think uh, probably everybody listening, uh, if, if we were to start talking about a peg, everybody would probably start yawning because they think they know that the IQD is pegged to the dollar, right? Well, uh, not necessarily so. And um, this this uh, recent article that's out on the 13th, the agreement with IMF improves the credit rating of Iraq. Well, I read this and I'm not concerned about any credit rating. Now, that's coming. What I saw and what I called you about is in the, I believe it's the uh, first, uh, maybe that's the second paragraph. It talks about the International Monetary Fund called on Iraq to conduct a large correction process and blah, 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 about social spending and so forth. But what's important is, and communication in linking the Iraqi dinar to the dollar, allowing a pillar of the economy. Now, somebody said something in, uh, in Arabic, and it was translated to and communication in linking the Iraqi dinar to the dollar. Well, there isn't too many ways that somebody can say something and it be translated in any language and come out in a verb or adverb of talking about uh, speaking or clarifying. And in this case, and communication in linking. Uh, this is talking about about the Iraqi dinar in relationship to the dollar. And I know a lot of you are going to start yawning and going, well, the, every time they meet with the IMF, they talk about staying pegged to the dollar. Well, I want to read to you, let me go back here and find it, part of an email between myself and uh, an investment advisor with Northern Gulf Partners in Iraq, in Baghdad. And this firm handles hundreds of millions of dollars of investment uh, instruments in Iraq daily, on a daily basis. And one of their partners has been on Fox Business News quite regularly. So this is, isn't, this guy is not a guru, a dinar guru, okay? This guy is in the middle of investing in Iraq, okay? Um, and this is what I'm going to read part of it, quote. Uh, since it was written before the central bank started to maintain the de facto dollar peg. Does, it, does everybody understand what, what he's saying? The current peg, even the thing that's spoken about in the IMF, is de facto. It is. It exists in a vacuum to serve a singularly purpose inside our rack. It's not official. It's not official. Now, those are my words. The very next sentence, this gentleman says, however, our rack does not have an official peg. I'll say it again. Our rack does not have an official peg. So where am I going with this? Let's go back to that other article, IMF article. Where is it? On the 13th, paragraph 2. Yes. And the IMF is calling upon Iraq to communicate in linking the Iraqi dinar to the dollar. Well, it is not officially linked or pegged to the dollar right now because they have not, they're not using their true value. And yet, here we are on the 13th, 
the IMF is saying to Iraq, communicate this, announce this, tell the world. You know, and it's interesting that you brought that up now and that we're having this, we're finally having this call. We talked about this a couple of days ago. Uh, Iraq just had a big, uh, big symposium just today. And, and actually, there's two different articles. One uh, that just came out today that are actually in the, in the current Iraq news thread. Uh, there's two different articles. One says they're going to have and one says they just had. Uh, but all the big hitters were there. If you, In fact, I thought it was interesting that they had the, had the symposium already. Nobody knew that it was coming. Nobody knew that it was going to happen. No big hoopla about this big shindig going on. Just, uh, just they did it, and they... And they did a post, and, and they did an article about it. Interesting that they kind of did a little bit of a press release, uh, but they put a list of all the people who uh, were at the symposium, and it's basically everybody. All the meeting directors of the board, meeting of the board, uh, governor of the Central Bank of Iraq, deputy governor of the Central Bank of Iraq. Uh, Director, General Director Rafidian, General Director General of TBI, just over and over and over and over and over. And you know what? Uh, that guy that wrote that one kind of oddball article about the, in fact, I'd almost predict in the next two or three days you're going to see an article about the uh, deleting the zeros because this this guy number five on the list. He was the one that did an article a while back about the deleting of the zeros. He's director general of the financial operations of the central bank. That guy was just just a huge list of who's who at this uh, at this meeting just the other day. After, shortly after, so let's say it was the 16th or the 17th. That's only three days after the IMF tells them to communicate. Here's the other thing that them communicating a realistic value and a realistic peg to the U.S. dollar would do for them. They don't have to, they don't have to, in fact, this was the push in this conversation, in this meeting, is they don't want to be, uh, they don't want to be spending their reserves of hard currency to defend their rate, because that's what they have to, a de facto rate isn't a real rate, and it has to be defended, otherwise it will fluctuate too much. They're actually there having, to set the, they're, they're having to set their value, and they're going to have to spend money every single day to defend that rate. A uh, true value with a true peg to a true to a to a more static, a more stable, uh, uh, a more stable uh, environment. In a more stable environment, they won't have to defend that. So it'll cost them a lot less money in the long run. Huge news, uh, fantastic dissertation. And the truth of the matter is, they they uh, they really don't have uh, a realistic peg to the U.S. dollar. That's what the IMF, World Bank, and the United Nations is all about lately. You know, last six months or a year, they've been telling them, here's how we're going to get you reintegrated. Re-. And my comment to you on the phone was the other day, I reckon set their value at anything they want. They can put it at $20 a dinar. But what good, it is, what good is it if no one recognizes the value? Or what good is it, for instance, let's say you're selling widgets. You could price them at anything you want. But what if nobody's buying it? And that's exactly. exactly the problem. That is the problem that they're going to have. They, they, need, they need that international support, which the IMF, World Bank, and the United Nations has been, has been offering once they play ball, and it looks like they're playing ball. So uh, fantastic news right here lately. Uh, any more comments, some final comments on that topic? Yeah, and there's, there's, there's the, the other article, the economic expert calls on the central bank to open accounts for Arab investors without restrictions. Now, now the header, I don't think, as we've seen in hundreds of these articles, do not reflect what's really being spoken in the, in the body. And, and this guy, um, capital market expert, nice, said, that, said it, it's in past tense, said that the decision of the central bank to lift the restrictions on the transfer of foreign currency abroad is a positive step and sends a positive message to investors abroad. That is almost verbatim in last December's comments after the meeting with the IMF in Oman about 
Iraq moving forward with doing these certain things, that it sends a positive message to investors abroad. And the, the lifting the restrictions on the transfer of foreign currency has been an item in all of the uh, um, Article 4 consultations for the past three or four years. And this guy says, speaks in the tense that it has been done, it has been lifted. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yes, and that's and that's you know a big mo- for them for them to liberalize their economy. Big money has to have an exit door. They have to have a way out because they won't come in if they don't have a they don't have a door uh, going the other way. Hey, BGG. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, go, go ahead. ahead. Uh, I was going to say you know about the peg. Uh, just to me, and this is as much a question as any comment. But uh, do you think this could be? partially why we're seeing the liberal discussion, and I say liberal because in times past it's been hit and miss, but I've been seeing them discuss baskets of currencies again, you know. Uh, so as to say they are trying to make a decision what they're going to do because, as Mr. White pointed out, they're not, quote, officially pegged. So they're, they, it's as though maybe, or am I going in the wrong direction on this? Do you, do you get what I'm asking? No. In other words, not. could it be I, could it be significant? Well, I, actually, I'll tell you what. I think the decision's already been made. I think what exactly. these, what these what these quote unquote conversations are is kind of like an education. It's an there education uh, moment. So all the people that need to get on board are busy getting on board right now, internally into Iraq. I mean, because that's exactly what the IMF said. They said you need to communicate this. To your people, to us, to the world, you know, get get on board with what we're going to do here. I, I think I think also uh, BGG, we're we're fighting a translation, and we don't know if we see the true intent of what the uh, translation has given us. It could very well be uh, not so much of communicating something after the fact. But to go ahead and and set set your value, you know, if if, if because if they're saying peg, that's it isn't just tying your tying a rope to a to a, your horse to a tree or something. It's taking the, the true value of your currency and publishing it, uh, making a statement saying, hey. This is where we're at, and this is how we're doing business. That's not, that's not an impossible statement. Also, entirely believable. I can see it. <clears throat> I can see it. So, uh, Bobby, you've been really quiet. Yes, sir. <laughs> well, no, I, I, I mean that's that, that's that's a good explanation. I've always <clears throat> and. And Al and I have talked about this, that I've always been stuck on the peg, the de facto peg. Uh, my take was that it's, it's, it's not a tradable currency, so it's a de facto peg. Uh, it, it's pegged against the dollar to keep it at 1182. Uh, anytime you talk about a float theory, uh, you know, you can refer that to the street rate. The street rate's always been a float theory, uh, per se. Uh, you know, we, we won't know until it happens. I mean, if, if they come out, I, I'm almost 100% sure that they'll stay pegged against the U.S. dollar uh, until they stabilize. And then if they want to go into a basket of currencies uh, like Kuwait does, um, you know, that's totally up to them. But in, in my opinion, you still have to have a strong economic uh, foundation in order to even think about uh, uh, the peg and or the float theory. That, that, and, that's, and, that's just me. Speaking and, and, of and, uh, economy, and there were several things that I that I just other headlines that I found that I, I was I was breezing through here. Here are the big ones that caught my eye. Number one, uh, and this is a little bit of human interest, a little bit of Mosul conflict oriented, but the Nineveh Guard are deployed into uh, various areas of Mosul and they have re- good relations with other forces. That's key. That's critical to the IMF, World Bank, and the United Nations. Here's why. The, the, uh, and one thing that's really hard to reason, it's hard to keep up with, 
uh, Iraq News is because they, they call the same group of people 20 different names, like an evolving name game over a two-month period. They're calling them the PMFs now. They're saying the PMFs are causing a bunch of problems now. The Nineveh Guard is actually getting along with the people in their same area. The PM, PMUs, PMFs, PM, uh, uh, sh- uh, paramilitary, the popular crowd, the, you know, so many different names that they've called these, these um, uh, Shia uh, thugs, basically, that, that Maliki put together, they would go into an area, and if they were allowed to fight, and this is why they were like the fifth stringers going into Mosul, if they were going, and, and it's been common knowledge that when they go in first, they, they perform all kinds of atrocities on the innocent civilian. Interesting and important that, the, that, that we're seeing a headline like that, number one. Number two, the Economic Commission or excuse me, uh, the uh, uh, members of parliament have reached a deal with the uh, electoral commission members. They're essentially paying them off to retire, giving them full benefits and getting them out of there because these next elections are going to be very important to Iraq's future. Number three, circling back to the whole economic thing, uh, the railroads are looking uh, with an Islamic bank for a way to pay salaries to its employees through the smart card. And it dawned on me as I was reading this, the way that this article lays out, one of the reasons they're having trouble getting the smart card implemented and activated is because it's not a legitimate peg yet. They don't have a foundational, they don't have a currency basis for being able to use all this technology that they want to use. And I really believe, heart of hearts, they're on the precipice of being able to do all these things that they want to do. They keep talking about using the smart card, yet they never do. You hear rumors about it, and people talk about, oh, they're using smart cards. They're not. They can't. It doesn't work. The, the technological underpinnings of it don't work because the rate changes. The street rate is all off until they, until they get a legitimate, real live, actual peg to another, you know, uh, reserve currency, major currency. And they don't, they don't have that just yet. They have a de facto peg, you know, the kind of the, the make-believe number. And they've said it all along that uh, the Iraqi dinar is grossly undervalued. So, you know, it looks like uh, political and stability uh, factors are going to be met fairly soon, and we'll see where it goes from there. Next week or two after that is what I want to, I want to see those, those news feeds, see what they look like. And again, after this big meeting, listen, United States, we've got leakers everywhere. This big, huge shindig of a meeting at the hotel with all the long list of people if you want to read that article, you can. It's fairly, in fact, it's probably number one article in the current Iraq news thread. Go to dinarupdates.com. Go about halfway down to the forum. Click on current, uh, uh, I think it's current news thread. Uh, and then uh, current Iraq news thread for the day. Click there. It's the first article. Go look at who was at this meeting. And I'm telling you, somebody's going to leak. There's going to be an article in the next day or two or three that's going to have something to do with the deleting of the three zeros. So you watch. So that is, that is the only prediction you're going to, the only actual prediction you'll get out of me regarding this whole Dinar thing is the next article is coming soon because these guys cannot resist the urge to talk. Yeah. Oh, they can. Sounds like this. We just cannot resist the urge to talk. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, okay, that's a good call, guys. Fantastic. Everybody cool? Yeah. Good to go. Good to go. All right, folks, uh, that was our conference call for the evening. Thank you so much for joining us. Make sure you stay tuned to dinarupdates.com for more news. Dinar, Dinar-